Imagine you're a six-year-old child sitting on your desk while the teacher begins her lessons. You try to focus on what the teacher is saying, but the noise of the air conditioning system sounds like a swarm of bees buzzing in your ears. You notice the flickering of the ceiling lights, whispers and colors that seem to echo and intensify within these walls, and as the chaos around you continues to grow, you feel something building up. Your feet begin to tap nervously, and your body begins to rock. Back and forth, back and forth, the teacher notices and tells you to stop. By now, everyone is staring at you, and what was building up inside is about to explode. You scream. The teacher grabs your arm, drags you out of the classroom, down the hall, and into the room. The scream room. The first time I heard about scream rooms was in a newspaper headlined, Teacher Locks Six-Year-Old with Autism in a Storage Room. I began to uncover the world of seclusion spaces. These small storage size rooms, windowless and with lockable doors used as methods of isolation for children who were having emotional breakdowns. These spaces discriminate against students with autism, anxiety, and sensory processing issues. To give you a small number, the Edmonton Public School Board released a report stating that they've used seclusion spaces 716 times in a single month. And although there have been attempts made by parents to dissolve these spaces, the board continues to operate 137 seclusion rooms. So why do these spaces exist? Well, simply because exclusion is an easy solution. But what if we challenge that? What if the focus wasn't on seclusion, but instead integration and designing better environments? My research re-examines the architecture of a classroom. By collaborating with occupational therapists, teachers, and autism specialists, I'm designing learning environments that are able to calm students using sensory integrative design. By sensory integration, I'm talking about the study of wavelengths, colors, sounds, nature, lighting, and how they influence our emotions. By having a better understanding of how architecture influences our behavior, we can design environments that are powerful, uplifting, and positive rather than distracting. My research looks at the economical costs and the personal benefits of sensory integrative design, and in doing so, brings autism awareness into architecture. By breaking the stereotype of what a classroom should look like and should be, we are opening the doors to new learning environments that focus on the equality, diversity, and success of every single student. And that is what I think the future of a classroom could be. Class dismissed.